Welcome back to my third video in a series of videos that I'm doing which analyzes the Hunter x Hunter story. In this video I'll be going over the Heavens Arena arc. This arc is once again a change of pace from what we have seen up until this point. It is the first arc within this series which is heavily centered around fighting. In addition to this we are introduced to a new concept which is essential to the fighting mechanics of Hunter x Hunter. I am talking about the technique referred to as Nen, which involves a living sentient being manipulating their life force energy, turning it into an aura which they can use in battle or various other situations. As well as this, we learn more about the Phantom Troop through the introduction of one of its members. We also see Gon and Killua being introduced to their first mentor, who just so happens to teach them about Nen, and how to utilize their life force energy during battle. During my first run through of Hunter x Hunter, I really enjoyed the Heavens Arena arc, but that was almost 7 years ago, so I definitely want to see if this arc holds up after all of this time, and especially after experiencing so many other anime and manga after watching Hunter x Hunter. So let's get into it, my breakdown and analysis of the Heaven's Arena arc. The Heaven's Arena arc runs from chapter 44 to chapter 63. It serves to build upon the world of Hunter x Hunter that we have come to appreciate so far. Through this action packed arc we learn that the battles in Hunter x Hunter are not won by brute strength or force. Instead individuals have to apply cunning strategies in order to overwhelm their opponents. And a key aspect of this strategy is by implementing Nen. The ability to effectively utilize Nen is a very important part of being a hunter. It's what separates a normal hunter from a professional hunter. After acquiring a hunter license and putting yourself through the rigorous hunter exam. When you have officially qualified as a hunter, you have yet to complete the secret portion of the hunter exam. The hidden portion of the hunter exam begins immediately after one acquires their hunter license. Only after you pass the secret hunter exam can you be worthy of the title of a professional hunter. This unspecified portion of the exam requires each hunter to go out into the world and to learn the basic principles of Nen. Other hunters will only recognize you as a professional hunter once you have learnt Nen. Without knowing the basics of Nen, it is difficult to accept any job as a hunter, since it is a requirement under most job listings. Nen isn't usually taught to most hunters who sit the formal part of the hunter exam because it is assumed that each person who acquires a hunter license will eventually come across a mentor who will be able to teach that person Nen in a way that best suits that individual, because this training process is very specific and personalized for each individual. So the hunter association assumes that once someone qualifies they will eventually find a suitable mentor who will be able to teach them the basic principles of Nen. And in essence this is what occurs here with Gon and Killua as they meet a mentor who teaches them the basics of Nen, while also seeing them practice what they have learnt through their participation in Heaven's Arena. Their intention to take part in Heaven's Arena was not only to train, but also to earn money. This is to earn a living for themselves, so that they can afford the airfare to York New City to meet up with Kuripika and Leorio on September 1st, like they had agreed. So the arc begins in chapter 44 as we are introduced to the Heaven's Arena building. It has 251 stories, and it holds the title of the fourth tallest building in the world. There aren't many rules in Heaven's Arena. The only one is to knock your opponent out, and as you progress up each of the 251 levels, the potential to earn money increases. Anybody who is obsessed or interested with fighting gathers here in order to push their abilities to their very limits against opponents who are equally as passionate about fighting. We quickly find out that this isn't the first time that Killua has come here. When he was only 6 years old, his father had left him here penniless. At this young age, he ordered Killua to stay in Heaven's Arena until he reached the 200th floor. It took Killua 2 years to accomplish this task. He tells Gon that after the 200th floor, people of Hisoka's caliber are found there. It takes a lot of skill to battle with the opponents at the higher levels. We immediately know from the get-go that this isn't going to be a walk in the park for either of them, despite them being very talented and gifted children. This background information is enough to make Gon feel nervous for what he is about to get himself in for. Unlike with any typical shonen tournament arc, the children are underestimated, but Gon makes quick work of his opponent. The invigilator of the fight, after watching Gon battle, deems him worthy enough to advance onto the the 50th level. When Killua defeats his opponent, the Invigilator realizes that he has already reached the 200th level and offers him to progress to the 180th level. But Killua wants to stick with Gon, so volunteers to go to the 50th floor alongside with him. The two of them are referred to as monsters, as they make quick work of progressing up the tower. Along with them, another boy who appears to be their same height and age makes quick work of his opponent, and he is given permission to advance onto the 50th floor also. We learn that the boy is called Zushi, and he faces off against Killua later on. In 
In Chapter 45, we learn more about how progression works in Heaven's Arena. We learn that the building is divided into 20 floors, with 10 divisions on each floor. So if someone was to win a battle on the 50th floor, then they immediately progress onto the 60th floor. We also learn that Heaven's Arena attracts millions of audience members to watch the fights. Because of the large number of spectators in attendance, the building has facilities for them to stay overnight, to shop or to even dine in restaurants. Everything is on site for their convenience. It's a nice piece of information which helps to bring the tower to life, because Killua later explains to Gon that once an individual reaches the 100th floor, they are given a room to stay in. We can understand that they are being compensated because of the attendance numbers, and a fighter's ability to attract spectators to watch their fights. We can understand that all of this helps to compensate for the fighter's service costs while they stay in Heaven's Arena. Gon and Killua eventually meet Zushi and his mentor Wing on the 50th floor. They all state their purpose for coming to Heaven's Arena. Zushi desires to improve himself by fighting strong opponents, while Killua and Gon also state their purpose for coming here. Our first impression of Wing is not that impressive, as he has very messy hair and an untucked shirt. But one thing to note, he is impressed that the two of them are able to keep up with Zushi. On the 50th floor, Killua faces off against Zushi, but unlike the first floor, this match is taking place in front of an audience of spectators. The odds are in favour for Zushi to win, but Killua makes quick work of him by assessing his stance, and then dodging his attack to strike him from behind. He confidently says that he will be repeating this same lightning chop technique until he reaches the 150th floor. He knows exactly what he is getting himself in for. He did, after all, spend two years in Heaven's Arena. Through all of this background information that we learn about Killua, we do get to appreciate how incredibly powerful he is, and you can only hope that Gon somehow manages to keep up with him. Otherwise, he's going to be left behind very quickly. During this fight, we are introduced to how battles are won in Heaven's Arena. The fights are scored on a points-based system, points being earned from hits, critical hits, and knockdowns. A clean strike is worth one point, a critical hit is worth two points, and knocking down your opponent is worth one point. And if, like Killua, you were to totally knock out your opponent, then you are awarded 10 points in total, and thus being crowned as the winner. Zushi isn't knocked out by Killua just yet, as he gets up after the strike. But after taking another strike from Killua, he is immediately back on his feet. Killua is surprised by his opponent, because in theory he should be out cold. But Zushi realising that he is cornered and has no other way of defeating Killua, begins to change his stance. It appears that he is about to use a technique which angers his mentor from the audience. Wing yells his name out in anger, which ends up startling Zushi. It is almost like Wing had created an aura of his own in order to terrify his student. After this, we learn that Killua eventually defeated Zushi, but Killua was disappointed because he wasn't able to knock out his opponent. Killua learns that the technique that Zushi was prevented from using by Wing is referred to as Ren. After learning about this ability called Ren, it appears that it has interested both Killua and Gon, and it seems like it is essential to learn, especially if they want to go all the way to the top of Heaven's Arena. The two of them, within the span of three days, win six fights, and eventually reach the 100th level. They are finally given a room to stay in and no longer have concerns about money. All of the battles that they are having don't seem to be challenging at all, as the two of them are defeating their opponents with just one hit. After fearing that they will eventually come across someone who will be able to use Ren, they decide to ask Zushi what Ren actually is, and how he had learnt to use it. He does a poor job of explaining it to Gon and Killua, which leads to Wing intervening. He agrees to teach them about Nen. After Killua expresses his desire to learn about Nen, as he feels like it's the secret behind his brother's powers of manipulation, Wing, through speaking to Gon and Killua introduces us to the concept of Nen, which is the power that ignites one's soul. An individual's Nen is expressed by the level of willpower that that person has. And if you've been following these videos and you've seen how determined Gon is, you can only assume that once he learns how to control this Nen, he will have incredible power. Because we have seen him demonstrate his level of willpower, which appears to be the strongest out of everybody we have seen. There are four exercises that one must practice in order to harness the power of Nen. The first is referred to as Ten, which is about focusing the mind and reflecting upon yourself, while also reaffirming or defining your goal. The next is Zetsu. So after someone has determined their goal, the exercise of Zetsu commands that person to put their goal into words. The third exercise, Ren, which we saw Zushi use during his battle against Killua, refers to intensifying your willpower after you have put your goal into words. And the final exercise is Hatsu, which is to assimilate all of the previous exercises and to put them into action. It is like a release. During his battle with Killua, when Zushi used his Ren, he was intensely intensifying his will to win, and this is what was causing Killua to feel intimidated or flustered. Wing demonstrates these four exercises as he determines a will to kill both Gon and Killua, in order to show them the power of intensifying one's will through Ren. He affirms his will and he says it out loud that he is going to kill the two of them, and then through Ren he intensifies his will. Wing proves that he has mastered these four exercises. Of course, he doesn't utilize the final exercise Hatsu to put his will into action, but his will to kill is successfully intensified as it leaves Gon and Killua 
unnerved. Because the two of them are not his students, he hasn't told them everything about Nen. Wing states that he only teaches Nen to those who are his students. Anybody else, he just gives a simple explanation. And this is because Nen can be easily misused if it's learnt by the wrong person. Wing demonstrates that by using Nen, even a plain piece of paper can become a blade. So it is very important to be selective of who Nen is taught to. By chapter 47, Gon and Killua have already reached the 200th level, which inspires Wing to consider if he is going to teach them Nen. As they walk towards the hallway to the 200th floor, they are stopped by a menacing aura. Unexpectedly, it is revealed that Hisoka is here, and he stands across the hallway of the 200th floor, preventing Gon and Killua from progressing forward. The two of them have until midnight to register to fight on the floor, but the intensity of Hisoka's bloodlust prevents them from moving forward. We learn that Hisoka is also in Heaven's Arena because of his passion for fighting. He had also been waiting for the two of them after learning that they were heading towards Heaven's Arena. If his reintroduction wasn't unexpected and strange enough, he acts like a mentor here. He warns the two of them that they are not ready to progress onto the 200th floor. He tells them to leave and to come back when they are ready. The only way that the two boys are able to progress forward is if they were to overcome Hisoka's Nen, which is virtually impossible for the two of them since they know hardly anything about Nen at the moment. And this is when Wing appears behind them and advises them to listen to Hisoka's advice. Gon and Killua have until midnight to register on the 200th floor. They have until then to learn about Nen, otherwise they will have to start again from the first floor. They are relying on Wing to teach them how to overcome Hisoka's Nen. In chapter 47, after officially becoming students of Wing, he explains to them more about Nen, revealing some truth behind some of his selective wording from earlier. Here we learn the true definitions of the four exercises which serve to cultivate one's Nen. He explains that everybody has Nen within their body. It is their life energy. Most people who haven't noticed or controlled their Nen leak it away, but through the exercise of Ten, they are able to hold their Nen within their body, strengthening this energy. The technique Zetsu means to suppress one's life force energy, like in Dragon Ball when individuals lower their ki in order to hide from their opponents. The next technique, Ren, serves to refine one's life energy. It enables their user to produce more of an aura. Wing demonstrates Ren by producing an aura. He is surprised that Gon and Killua can feel it, and is impressed by how sensitive they are to it. He even states that it is rare to come across individuals who pick it up this quickly. Wing concludes that the environments that Gon and Killua were raised in makes it perfect for them to learn Nen. As well as this, he deduces that they were born with innate talents which makes it easier for them to learn and utilize Nen. Wing begins to explain the significance of an aura. He says that an individual's aura can be intensified to such an extent that it can even kill a defenseless person. That is, if that aura has a malicious intent associated with it. The only way to protect yourself against a malicious aura is by using Nen. By effectively using the first exercise, Ten, an individual can develop a defense against someone else's malicious aura. Wing explains that through a Ten defense, you can use your own aura to block an opponent's attack. This explains why Gon and Killua were prevented from walking across the hallway, which was riddled with Hisoka's malicious intent. Without a proper defense, if they found themselves in the middle of his evil aura, then their bodies would have shattered. This is why Hisoka prevents them from moving forward. He is kind of nudging them in the right direction because he wants them to get stronger so that he can fight them at their best one day. Hisoka is a good judge of character, and his assessment skills are second to none. His assessment of Gon and Killua and their innate talents and gifts leads him to believe that once they are older and more experienced, they will be formidable opponents. Something for him to really look forward to. But in the meantime, he has to focus on not getting too excited and holding himself back from killing them. There are two ways to activate Nen. You can either do it very slowly and carefully, or by force. Killua and Gon don't have the luxury of time, so they have to do it by force, as they have only until midnight to master the first exercise of Nen. It took Zushi six months to master Ten, but the speed of mastering Ten depends entirely on the boys. They need to learn how to contain their aura in a very short amount of time. Through transmitting his own aura by using Hatsu, he is going to force open the aura nodes of Killua and Gon. An analogy of jumpstarting a battery is used for this exercise. Wing explains that he decided to teach Gon and Killua Nen because he quickly realized how talented they are. He also notes that they are untrained to be entering onto the 200th floor, because everyone beyond the 200th level uses Nen. He warns them about the upcoming battles that they will encounter going upwards from the 200th floor, but he reassures them that they will awaken their Nen. And this is because he has assessed that they have the talent and capability to do so. Wing is impressed by their determination and will to progress. After awakening their aura nodes, their life force energy begins leaking out, but they begin focusing on containing their aura. Eventually, the two of them, by remaining calm, slow the leaking of their aura, and they contain their life force energy around their body. Almost instantly, they were able to master Ten. Wing notes that they achieved this without any instructions. They innately knew how to control their Ten. They took the position which was the best for controlling their life force energy, and they mastered the flow of their aura within mere moments. Gon and Killua are described as amazing, but at the same time terrifying. 
flying. At the very young age of 12, they continue to surprise the adults around them by surpassing heights which no ordinary child should be able to reach. After this very brief training with Wing, they return to the 200th floor. They are able to successfully walk through Hisoka's sinister aura. Hisoka knows that the two of them have come to Heaven's Arena to train themselves in order to fight him, but he isn't going to entertain either of them unless they have won at least one battle from the 200th floor. Hisoka walks away from them for now as we are introduced to three new opponents who we can only assume know how to use Nen, and through training and fighting them, they will continue to learn more about the various different aspects to Nen. The three fighters are called Guido, Sadaso, and Revelt. We learn that after registering to fight on the 200th floor, they have 90 days to prepare for their fight. Of course, they can request for a fight any time that they want, but their deadline to actually battle someone is 90 days. If they don't do so, then their registration for the 200th floor will be revoked. For each battle that is won, they get another 90 days to prepare. On this floor, they need to win 10 battles in order to challenge what is known as the Floor Master. There are 21 Floor Masters. Each of them are in charge of their own floor. After defeating a Floor Master, you inherit that title and get that person's floor. Through this explanation, it feels like we have unlocked a completely new world. Gon and Killua only know the basics of Nen, but all of the Floor Masters and the opponents from the 200th floor onwards are all utilizing Nen effectively in battle. The roles are completely reversed. Gon and Killua most likely won't be doing any one-hit knockouts. After hearing about the Floor Masters and the introduction of Nen, it feels like it is Gon and Killua who are in danger of being knocked out by one strike. Gon and Killua do indeed get plenty of praise, and the fact that they are talented is focused upon. But what I really appreciate is that the difference between where they are and where they need to be in order to become a professional hunter or to actualize their full potential is always highlighted. Hisoka is an example of a character which helps us to understand the true lengths that Gon and Killua have yet to overcome. Indeed, they are far from reaching the heights of Hisoka, and this arc heavily focuses on this. It isn't just Gon and Killua having successful win after successful win. Up until this point, they have found it very easy to work their way up Heaven's Arena, but the battles which take place from the 200th floor onwards appear to be unpredictable, and this is because Nen has become a vital element of the battle mechanics from now on. After registering for the 200th floor, they are challenged by the trio. Gon registers to battle with one of them called Guido. His fight is scheduled for the next day. Gon doesn't expect to win the battle. He just wants to test out his 10 in order to get a feel of it during battle. Wing had told him not to participate in any matches for the first two months. Gon, who is too impatient to wait, disobeys his mentor. Guido tells Gon that he is fortunate that he is going up against him, because in comparison, he isn't as strong as the other Nen users. He uses dancing tops, which seem to be powered by his aura. Gon is unaware of what they can do, resulting in him being repeatedly attacked by them. Each hit feels as heavy as a sledgehammer. Gon realizes that the dancing tops must be charged with Nen, so he tries to feel their presence. But because he hasn't trained enough in utilizing Nen, he isn't able to sense their presence for long, which results in him being hit again by a dancing top. Gon realizes that the dancing tops are not really attacking him. They are just spinning around and attacking whatever they encounter. Equipped with this knowledge, he ignores the dancing tops. While he tries to land a direct hit on Guido, his opponent uses a technique called Tornado Top, turning himself into a dancing top. In his first official battle against someone who knows how to use Nen, Gon is being utterly bested. Wing even comments on his inexperience and states that he is five years too early to be fighting Guido, but then realizing that he only has one point left until he is defeated, Gon releases his 10. Without being taught it, he uses Zetsu. By using Zetsu, he is able to focus all of his senses on the dancing tops. Wing deduces that Gon must have been able to utilize Zetsu out of instinct. It came naturally to him, using the analogy of how animals naturally pick up hunting. He realizes that Gon must have grown up close to animals, which explains why he has so much potential. One specific rule about Nen which is drilled into our heads is that the only way to defeat a Nen user is by using Nen yourself. By utilizing Zetsu, Gon has depleted all of his 10, so he has nothing to defend himself against Guido's dancing tops. By using Zetsu, Gon successfully dodges an attack for the first time during this match. He continues, as it is evident that Gon is enjoying the thrill of the battle. He dodges Guido's dancing tops for over an hour. He has even released 50 dancing tops into the ring, and Gon is keeping up with all of them by using Zetsu. But after Gon is cornered and he has nowhere left to go, he is attacked by one of the dancing tops, which results in him having multiple fractures to his arms and cracks to his ribs. He has lost the battle and it will take him four months to recover from his injuries. After the fight, Wing checks up on Gon and slaps him for disobeying him and being reckless. Killua being cheeky lies to Wing and tells him that it will take two months for Gon to recover. He then proceeds to forbid Gon from participating in any matches for two whole months. He also forbids him from training or studying Nen during this time. He wants to see if Gon can keep this promise. If he can't, then there is nothing that Wing can teach him. Killua and Wing reprimand Gon because he genuinely could have lost his life during that fight. But Wing is surprised that Gon was risking his life but he was enjoying it at the same 
same time. Some foreshadowing for the events in the Kimura Antark occur here, as Killua states that he is usually level-headed and he knows what fights to pick, but he states that Gon is very different in this regard. He doesn't think as logically as Killua does. Once he has decided to battle someone, he gets very absorbed within it, like his obsession with battling against Hisoka and returning the favour to him. Wing begins to question himself whether if he did the right thing to force open Gon's life energy pods so that he could use Nen. Killua, who remains the ever-loyal friend, decides to stick by Gon. He wants to learn Nen at the same time as Gon, so he decides to wait with him. Wing has a change of heart and tells them that they can practice releasing their Nen and focusing on the Ten exercise every day. When Killua returns, he sees Gon meditating. He smiles and begins to meditate with him. They have only known each other for a very short amount of time, but Killua really does enjoy Gon's company, and this brief but subtle smile on Killua's face clearly indicates this here. When Wing returns to his room, he continues to question what he has done. One of the panels is a complete foreshadowing for the events that occur later on. He asks himself if he has awoken a terrible monster, and this is well before the events of the Chimera Antark. It is small subtle details like this which hint at the darker aspects of Gon's character. It is something that I didn't even notice during my first read through, but while rereading the series, this one panel is hard to ignore, especially after knowing the events which occur later on. I think Wing was fully aware of the consequences of his actions by beginning to teach Gon Nen, but the thing is, if he hadn't taught Gon Nen, then Killua and Gon would have found someone to eventually learn it from. Since they are on a journey of progression and growth and want to reach the levels of Hisoka and Killua's brother, they would have had to learn Nen sooner or later. It is just unfortunate that this task has fallen upon Wing to teach the two of them Nen, because it is ultimately Wing who will have to shoulder the burden and the consequences of them having learnt Nen, and if they use it in any way to harm themselves in the future, which as we've seen during Gon's battle with Guido, he is very susceptible to doing. In chapter 51, we also get an update on Kurepika's whereabouts, as we see that he tries to join an agency, but he has refused membership because he doesn't know how to use Nen. He is told to come back once he is able to utilise Nen, since it is a minimum requirement for joining the agency. In chapter 52, one month has passed since Gon was injured, and he is now completely healed, which is slightly terrifying since it should have taken him four months to completely heal. Killua presents Gon with tickets to Hisoka's next match. He is going to be fighting an opponent called Castro. This is someone who he had defeated two years ago, but he spared his life because of the potential that Hisoka saw within him. This rematch, in a way, is Hisoka evaluating how well Castro has used these last two years to live up to the potential that Hisoka sees within him. While Gon and Killua are making their way over to spectate the fight. They are interrupted by Wing. He tells Gon that through watching the fight, he will be analysing their techniques, and thus he will be learning Nen through observation. He forbids Gon from watching the battle, since it would be breaking the promise that he made to Wing not to study or practice Nen for two whole months. Killua is left to go watch the fight on his own. Through this brief encounter, Wing notes that they have been practicing their Nen exercises every day, since he did give them permission to practice releasing their Ten. He can tell this because he can see that their auras are not leaking as much as before. Their life force energy is content around their body. He describes their aura flowing around their body like a calm river. I think Wing is definitely surprised and unnerved about how quick Gon and Killua are picking up their Nen training. He definitely isn't used to his students mastering the different exercises of Nen this quickly. Like I said before, what's concerning Wing is not where the boys are now, but it's where they will be in the future. If they are already doing so well, it is frightening to think about how much skill and power they will have once they reach their full potential. Moving on to the battle between Castro and Hisoka, Castro states that he is undergone intense training for the last two years. He initially appears to have the advantage over Hisoka, as he even knocks Hisoka down. While it seems like Hisoka is being bested, in fact he is actually analysing his opponent and trying to understand the extent of his fighting ability. Castro doesn't take his opponent lightly, as he ends up severing Hisoka's right arm. But Hisoka goes through all of this in order to understand how Castro's ability works. He realises that he is using a doppelganger against him. As the battle nears its conclusion, Castro ends up severing Hisoka's left arm also but in a strange turn of events, it appears that Hisoka has reattached his right arm. He ends up taking out Castro's doppelganger. Then he throws several cards towards Castro's body, which end up defeating and killing him. Hisoka is declared the winner. He is disappointed that his opponent has squandered the remaining time that he had left, because in the end, he didn't end up living up to Hisoka's expectations of him. So instead of sparing his life this time, he ends up killing his opponent. Hisoka is bored by him and no longer sees any potential for growth within him. Because of this, he has no desire to fight him at a future 
future time. And this is why he ends up killing him. In chapter 55, Hisoka walks towards a woman who is waiting for him. She asks to see his arms. It appears that she has the ability to stitch back his severed arms together, restoring the muscles, blood flow, and nerves to both of his arms. Through her Nen ability, she successfully reattaches Hisoka's arms. To hide these stitches, which indicate that his arms have been reattached, Hisoka reveals and uses his own Nen ability. Firstly, he uses bungee gum to attach a material around the seam, and then uses another Nen ability called Texture Surprise to alter the surface of the material so that it appears as skin. This woman who helps Hisoka is revealed as the first member of the Phantom Troop that we are introduced to. Her name is Machi. She informs Hisoka, who we also learn is a member of the Phantom Troop, that every member of the Phantom Troop is now required to meet in York New City by noon on August 30th. Before it was anyone who was free, but now everybody is required to meet up at this location. Considering the build-up and all of the characters who are meeting in one location at the exact same time, a big story event is definitely going to be taking place in York New City. We know from Kurapika describing the Phantom Troop earlier in the series that all of its members have a tattoo of a spider with a number on it. In chapter 55, we learn that the tattoo that Hisoka has on his back of the spider is a complete fake. Through using his Nen ability, he is able to pass this off as a real tattoo. After he takes it off, he says that it is time to hunt down the spiders. So it appears that Kurapika and Hisoka have very similar goals here. Hisoka did ask Machi if Krolo will also be there at the meetup in York New City, to which she presumes that he will be. Trying to understand Hisoka's motives for wanting to take down the spiders, we can only presume that it is because he wants to be the most powerful, and he clearly has some interest in this character called Krolo who has just been introduced. Of course, we later learn that Krolo Lucifer is the leader of the Phantom Troop, and Hisoka has a very obsessive desire to fight and defeat him, presumably to prove that he is the most powerful. In chapter 56, two months are finally passed, and Wing allows Khan and Killua to study with Zushi. The first thing that they do is to watch Hisoka's battle with Castro, in order to understand how Hisoka was manipulating his aura during the fight. Wing then tells Gon to register and to fight in 26 days, while asking Killua to fight the day after Gon does. In this time, they will be mastering Gyo, which is an advanced type of Ren. This is where a Nen user concentrates a large amount of aura into one part of the body. The application of Gyo is most likely used to enhance someone's eyesight, focusing their aura onto their eyes. It allows someone to see their opponent's aura, and the Nen that they have manipulated and concealed. While Gyo is being activated, an individual can pick up and sense very faint auras. It is this technique which Wing wants them to master before their next fight. Gon and Killua are training along with Zushi, as they visualize their energy building up in their body, this energy stemming from every cell within their body. They project all of this outward, as they try to perfect the timing of their 10 release. Understandably, Zushi is shocked, because they are improving at an incredibly fast rate. They are progressing in certain aspects of their training within mere moments. In comparison, Zushi states that it took him weeks to accomplish the things that Gon and Killua are doing. This fast rate of progression doesn't stop, as Killua proves to Wing that he has mastered Gyo in one evening. He is able to visually see Hisoka's aura and describes it as stretchy, adding that it is because of his sticky rubber aura that he is able to do most of his magic tricks. Wing acknowledges Killua's assessments and agrees with him entirely. Once again, both of them have exceeded Wing's expectations, as he didn't expect either of them to have learnt Gyo in one night, as it appears that Gon has already demonstrated Gyo to Wing before Killua arrived. Wing allows Killua to fight early. He decides to fight Sadaso, one of the members of the trio that they encountered earlier. They tried to kidnap Zushi and have been doing really underhanded things in order to get a fight with Gon and Killua. They must assume that they are still rookies who don't know how to properly use Nen, but in the time that has elapsed since Gon and Guido's battle, the two of them have made immense progress. Killua defeats his opponent Sadaso even before the match begins, as he breaks into his room and threatens him, demonstrating the threatening and sadistic side to his character. His warning induces enough fear into Sadaso to make him forfeit his match with Killua. This ability to instill fear into his opponent is credited to the training that he has acquired from his family as an assassin. Killua also threatens Revelt and Guido, as the two of them agree to fight fair and square against both Gon and Killua in their upcoming fights. The day of their fights finally begin, as Gon is scheduled to fight Guido, and Killua is scheduled to fight Revelt, both on the same day. During this rematch, Gon demonstrates how far he has come, as he easily eliminates all of Guido's dancing tops. This is because Gon's Nen defenses have improved considerably. He uses his father's fishing rod to flip the floor tile that Guido is spinning on. Wanting some payback for the defeat that he suffered earlier, Gon is merciless, as he punches Guido, who is lying defenseless on the floor. Guido is punched before he can even say that he gives up. Gon is furious because Guido and his friends had threatened Zushi. In a similar manner to how Killua had threatened Sadaso earlier, Gon too shows that he has this threatening side of his character, as he warns Guido to never touch Zushi again. If this is how threatening they are at the age of 12, just imagine how terrifying they will be once they are older. And this is 
exactly what Wing is afraid of while he was teaching them Nen. Killua is up next as he battles against Revelt. He uses his abilities against him as it results in his opponent being electrocuted. A few days later, Killua was supposed to have fought Guido, but Guido forfeits the match. During Gon's battle with Revelt, he wins the fight by making his opponent pass out out of fear. At the end of chapter 59, Hisoka now agrees to battle against Gon, saying that he qualifies now for a battle against him, and he will fight him any time. Before Gon battles Hisoka, Wing decides that it is time for them to learn about Hatsu. After having mastered the basics of Nen, it is now about building upon their own unique expression of Nen. Wing states that all Nen users fall into six broad categories. He lists them as emitter, enhancer, transmuter, manipulator, conjurer, and specialist. It is essential now to find out which category Gon, Killua, and Azushi fall under. The Nen abilities that someone ends up expressing are shaped by how they were brought up and the environment that they were brought up in. We learn from Wing that Hisoka is a transmuter as he can change his aura into rubber-like substances. Wing now presents them with a way to find out what type of Nen user they are. This method is called water divination. Wing demonstrates that he is a enhancer type as he changes the volume of water in the glass, resulting in it pouring over. Gon is the first to find out what type of Nen user he is, as we learn that he is a enhancer. Azushi is a manipulator, and Killua tries but no visible change appears to the water. But then Wing asks him to taste the water, stating that it doesn't taste like water anymore because it's a little sweet. Wing then states that Killua is a transmuter because he has changed the taste of the water. So for the next four weeks, Wing orders them to pay attention to this practice, and tells them to continually practice water divination until they can make more of a pronounced change. During this time, Gon has signed up for his next fight with Hisoka. But the day before his fight with Hisoka, the three boys present to Wing the results of their training. Gon and Killua are now able to influence the water with their Nen type to a stronger degree than the first time they did it. When Gon tries, the water is gushing out of the glass. When Killua tries, the water now tastes as sweet as honey. Wing declares that they have successfully graduated his training, and even states that Gon has passed the hidden aspect of the hunter exam. He can now be declared as a fully fledged hunter. It is revealed during their training, Wing had been in touch with Chairman Netero, who had shared with him information about Gon and Killua. Wing even advises Killua to reset the exam, and he tells Gon how Kurapika and Hanzo are doing, stating that they have already learnt Nen under other teachers, and other candidates who had passed the exam like Illumi and Hisoka had already known Nen to begin with. In chapter 61, the highly anticipated battle against Gon and Hisoka begins. Gon begins the fight by charging at Hisoka, but Hisoka stands still at the same spot, while Gon frantically tries to land a point against him. Repeatedly, after being knocked back and then charging back towards Hisoka, Gon attacks but then gets on the defensive as Hisoka also begins to attack him. The first point is scored by Hisoka as he catches Gon off guard. He soon begins to find some glaring openings in Gon's offensive strategy. It results in him successfully attacking Gon. Killua notes that it appears that Hisoka is having a lot of fun during this fight, but there is a world of difference between the two of them. The only chance that Gon has is to take advantage of Hisoka's feelings of superiority, but even then it is a very slim chance. Like his previous fights on the 200th floor, Gon uses the floor tiles to his advantage. He flips one of the tiles and punches it, breaking it into pieces. Amongst the rubble, he is able to find cover, where he sneaks into Hisoka's blind spot and is able to land a clean hit against him. This very powerful punch is enough for Gon to have repaid his favour back to Hisoka, and to fulfil his goal of punching him back in the face from the hunter exam arc. The ref declares it a critical hit, scoring two points to Gon. After this attack, Hisoka finally moves from the spot that he has been standing in throughout the entirety of this fight. Gon too fearlessly walks towards Hisoka and returns to him his number 44 badge from the fourth phase of the hunter exam. This whole goal that Gon had had some excellent setup. The build-up was really interesting, and the payoff is very satisfactory. Accomplishing this task feels well earned for Gon, as we get to see how much he has progressed since he first encountered Hisoka. Hisoka tells Gon that as a transmuter he is very fickle, so it is up to Gon to maintain his interest, because to Hisoka something of value can become instantly meaningless to him as soon as he feels bored, and this is exactly the change of emotions that occurred with Castro, which resulted in him being bored with him and killing him. Hisoka tells him not to disappoint him as he starts to fight against him seriously. Here we get to see the world of difference between Gon and Hisoka. Despite him being incredibly talented and having learnt Nen in such a short period of time, all of this success is nothing in comparison to a monster like Hisoka. Ultimately, during this fight, Hisoka is being used as an example of how far Gon has yet to go. After Hisoka goes on the offensive, he scores a critical hit. It results in Gon being more cautious as he tries to think above a strategy against him, but his opponent has no patience, as he says that he will force Gon to come to him. Gon, by using Gyo, can see that Hisoka has attached a piece of his bungee gum to his cheek. He uses it to pull Gon towards him and to attack him. It is a very harsh lesson that he is teaching Gon here, making him come to realise how foolish he was to actually challenge Hisoka fearlessly. Gon realising that he is trapped and he has no 
no way to escape from Hisoka's bungee gum. He becomes determined to move forward in the face of this adversity. Gon's determination is enough for Hisoka to start losing his mind, as he has to restrain himself from completely killing Gon. He has to wait until Gon is older and has actualized his full potential, so that he may have a fight with a very worthy adversary. All of the attacks that Gon is landing on Hisoka have no effect on him. Hisoka once again lands another two-point critical hit. Gon argues with the ref that he immediately got back up and it should have been counted as a critical hit, but the judge ignores him. But while he was talking to the judge, Hisoka had attached a piece of rubble to his bungee gum. He uses this piece of rubble to score the match point, thus declaring Hisoka as the winner. After this fight, Hisoka analyzes that if they were to have fought 10 more times, then Gon may have stood a chance. But he states that this is the end to their exhibition fights, as their next battle will be their last. There will be no rules and it will be a fight to the death. Hisoka has now won 10 matches and he goes on to become a floor master. The judge of the fight goes on to admit that he was scoring the fight in favor of Hisoka winning, because he was well aware of the world of difference between the two fighters. In a way, because of his lenient scoring with Hisoka, it resulted in the battle ending prematurely, but he did so with the intention of preventing Gon from dying during the fight. At the end of chapter 63, Killua says that they have accomplished everything they have needed to do in Heaven's Arena, stating that they have no need to be here anymore. Together they decide to visit Gon's home on Whale Island, as he has been away from there for seven months. And thus, after saying goodbye to Wing and Zushi, the Heaven's Arena arc concludes. After re-experiencing this arc, it still holds up as one of my favourite stories told within Hunter x Hunter. I loved the introduction of this new concept of Nen, and how it is implemented into the series. I think it is incredibly creative and well thought out, especially in regards to the various different exercises that one must master before they can start uniquely expressing their own Nen abilities. As well as this, I was impressed by the way that water divination was explained to assess someone's Nen type. This arc has a clear divide. Everything that occurs below the 200th level is the fighting mechanics that we have seen up until this point, but everything above the 200th level is all Nen based fighting. It is a completely new world, and it is one that we are going to be diving deep into in the future arcs. Another welcoming surprise was to see Hisoka as the antagonist of this arc. We get to learn about his relationship with the Phantom Troop, realizing that he has ulterior motives, as well as being introduced to a member of the Phantom Troop through Machi. As of this point, we don't know what Hisoka is planning, but we do know that he is interested in this character called Krolo. But his character in this arc serves to motivate Gon to learn Nen, as Hisoka only decides to battle him once he has learned the absolute basics of Nen. Despite how evil and sinister his character is, in this arc he does appear to be nurturing both Gon and Killua. This is shown firsthand when he prevents them from progressing to the 200th level, by using his sinister aura to block them from entering. The magician shows off his skills and his Nen abilities during his battle with Castro, and then during his fight with Gon. With Castro, he shows no restraint and he kills his opponent. With Gon, he uses heavy restraint, trying not to prematurely end his life. He definitely is a very strange character, but one that I never get bored of seeing on screen. And when it comes to both Gon and Killua, in the space of seven months, their friendship has truly blossomed. They look out for each other and support each other through everything. And this is shown firsthand when Killua decides to stop learning then for 60 days, after Gon was told not to by Wing. He did not want to get ahead of Gon. As a true friend, he wants them to progress together and to become stronger at the same time. I've mentioned it throughout this video, the two boys are monsters in their own right. They have demonstrated how incredibly gifted and talented they are, but despite this, they are nowhere near the level of individuals like Hisoka. Gon has always been the type to be very strategic, and I love how in this arc he implements his strategy with his newfound Nen abilities. Through his talent for strategizing, he was able to land a clean hit on Hisoka, and when it comes to Killua, he continues to prove that he is one of the scariest characters in the series. He is very intimidating, and we see this when he makes Sadaso forfeit his match. It is very easy to forget that he is a assassin when he is being playful and childish with Gon, but I really do like that he has a softer and more gentle side, and he shows this to people that he truly cares about, like his friends. The dynamics that develop between the two characters really help to sell the friendship to us, and now moving our attention over to the individual who are taught them Nen, Wing. From his very lackluster introduction, we see that he is a very powerful individual himself. The true extent of his abilities is not really explored, but through his assessments and his analysis of all of the fighting that was going on in Heaven's Arena, we can understand and appreciate that he is a gifted fighter himself. When it is revealed that he has been in contact with Chairman Netro, we realize that he is not someone to be underestimated. For someone who appears to be disorganized and ordinary, his knowledge of Nen proves otherwise. In this arc, Gon and Killua meet a boy who is pretty much their same age. Zushi's character is a great way to understand how far removed Gon and Killua are from other 12 year olds who are also learning how to fight and utilize Nen. While Zushi's character serves to show us how talented Gon and Killua are, characters like Hisoka and other powerful individuals help us to realize that the two boys are still far from reaching their full potential. When it comes to this arc, 
I have to admit that the 2011 version does an excellent job of adapting the material from the manga, and I highly recommend experiencing the arc from that adaptation. In particular, the battle between Gon and Hisoka has incredibly fluid animation, and it is one of my favourite battles to go and rewatch from the 2011 anime. Overall, I really enjoyed the Heavens Arena arc, and I am very interested about what is going to go down on September 1st in York New City. Now that we know the Phantom Troop will also be there, and Kuripika has now learnt Nen, these little plot points which are briefly mentioned in the Heavens Arena arc really do build up a sense of hype and excitement for the next arc. What are your thoughts on the Heavens Arena arc? Do you enjoy it as much as I do? Are there aspects of it that you didn't like as much as I did? I would love to see the discussion of this arc continued in the comments. I am currently working on the York New City arc analysis and breakdown, so if you want to be the first person to watch this very lengthy video that I'm going to be dropping very soon, then subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, and thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with the rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.